Hey, this is John. Welcome back to my Let's Play of Mechanical Mastery. In the last episode, we updated our uh, fission reactor to be bigger and made this dynamic tank to fill it full of water. So that's going pretty well. I turned down the burn rate so we would keep increasing our supply of fissile fuel, which I think is roughly stable at a burn rate of 20 right now. We'll make more fissile fuel later, and then we will not have a problem with that. But for now, let's finally turn our attention to making this super critical phase shifter. So I have moved all the pipes. I put the solar neutron activator over here, so he's getting nuclear waste. He's dumping the polonium in this bucket right now, but this will probably go away. I probably won't buffer the polonium at all. Um, Radioactive waste barrels can only input and output on their top and bottom. And I don't think I can ha have him be an input and an output from the side like this. I'm going to have to either do something weird with the cables or do something else. So for now, I just want him to keep making this uh, while I while I make that supercritical phase shifter. And this will probably go all into there. So. Let's get started making that super critical phase shifter since I think I have everything we need to make that work now. All right, so we need, um, what, three of these, I think? Um, yeah. Okay. All right, um, there we go. There's one port. We need a three though, right? We need three of these SPS ports. Let's just make a pattern for that, because why not? Not sure I didn't make one before, but whatever. Okay, let's make two more of those. There we go, three of our SPS ports. Then we need, um, what was it, 128 of that? No, yeah, 123 structural glass. Okay. How much structural glass do we have? We have nine right now. So we need uh, more. Let's see here, 123, that's like what, two stacks basically? There we go. Uh, yeah, 123 structural glass. Let's take these off the list. And then we need SPS casing. And we need 60 of those. So, yeah. Um, what's that thing called? The, um, the coil. We need uh, the coil thing. We are missing HDPE pellets. Oh, we need to make these HDPE sheets. Huh. Okay, I didn't realize we needed more of those. We needed more of this black HDPE stuff. Okay. Are we still making those? We've got that many right now. Which one? Let's see here. Can I make some of it right now and then we'll make more? Okay, we can do this for now. And then, is something making those? I think something is making them. I don't remember which one it is. This is my lithium guy. Hmm. You're not that guy either. What is making you? Hang on. Okay, the ethylene guy makes the pellets, so... And then the substrate is made by this guy. So let's just kick this up a little bit. Let's say we want to keep 256 of these in here and maybe 512 of these. Might be enough. So let's just kick all these machines. If they can do enough power, this should be okay. Um, we're not getting enough biofuel in here at once. How much biofuel are you making? 
what's making biofuel? It's gotta be this crusher guy, right? You're the crushing factory. So, okay. You're not pulling out fast enough. Okay, let's get an overclocker for this guy. And let's pull out faster from you. There we go. Now he pulls out just fine. Okay, so is that enough uh, to get this going? Yeah, now you're full of biofuel. Um, if I speed you back up, oh, don't don't twist. Yeah, now it's uh, still not quite keeping up, but better. This guy keeps up just fine, though. So, he is fine. We just need more of this substrate stuff. So, if we could dump more of you in there at once, that would be fine, I think. So, what's your item card say? Whoa, not, not that many. Okay, there we go. We've now moved more biofuel in there at once. And that should be enough to give you a kick. Not bad, really. You just don't pull out fast enough again. But, okay. That should be okay. So, where are we? And let's... You know what? Let's do... Let's do more. I want more of these things. I didn't know how much I would need, and now it's a problem. Okay. We do have 30. We need 30 more. We can make that. Okay, there we go. So we can make 16. What would our recipe for these? Um, it's these guys. So that must mean we weren't keeping enough black HDPE sheets in there. So we probably stuck those in one of these guys. Yeah, this right here. The black. Was it the black iron? So we probably. Should have put him in one of these guys. And that might have done better. Okay. So. And then the HDPE sheet again. Would have done better in this guy. So. Put him in there as well. We'll have more of those in the future. May not need it, but we'll have it. So. We are like three away, so it's working on these. This is an induction smelter recipe, so you could probably be kicked a little bit. Yeah, what are you at? You don't have any linkage amplifiers. Let's fix that. All right. Faster, faster. Well, you're the wrong one. Well... They're all getting sped up. We got power. Okay. That is much better than it was. Now he's now going down. So do we have our... Yeah, we got our last three. All right. Quest complete. We should have enough stuff to build this super critical phase shifter. It's kind of a complicated multi-block design. So we'll see if I can build this. Um... All right, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So here's the center of the platform. And we need actual glass on the bottom. And as I understand it, we need a three by three pattern. Or is it a five by five? One second. Looks like it's almost a five by five. The three in the middle are five by three and we don't have corners over there so one two three is that right yeah it looks a little bit off but yeah that looks right okay and then we have to go um out with uh this sps casing so it looks like we go out on each of these sides and then 
it gets a little bit complicated. We put one here? I can't remember. Get the wiki real quick. Well, I think we at least have to do this. I think we have to go up a little bit. So I think we have to go up here and build the same face on each side. This is one, two, three, four. We to go up one more. We have like this. And then the same thing on each one of these. So three, four, five. And three like this. Then we need three, four, five. Do three like that and not like that. And one, two, three over here. Two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And then one, two, three. And then we're going to connect these and make a hexagon pattern, I think. Is it a hexagon? I don't know. But I think it's kind of like this. So... The last thing would be up here and then filling out that block and then the coil goes somewhere, the supercharged coil. So how does that work? Well, we need to add some casings here around the glass. So let's go ahead and do that. That looks better. I'm still confused about the top, though. Uh, I feel like it's going to go in with casing, and then the glass will be there. So that makes sense to me. All right, so it looks like we need to go in with this. Uh, okay, so this should be two, three, four, five, which it's not, so I have to assume either this or this should have been casing. Okay, I think I forgot to do this. We need casing on top of all of these. We can break this glass here, and then we can go in from this. So, two, three, one, two, three, and then this should be a 5, and this is a 5, and then we just need to go 1, 2, 3, and 4. And this is not quite done because A, there is no port, and there are no coils. Let's start with one port and one coil and we can make more ports and more coils let's dig our way out of here so we'll have a port here and a port on the back maybe i might move the ports but there we go super critical phase shifter so there are Inputs and there are outputs. Um, I think, let's see here. Let's see what happens if I configure this. Okay. And maybe not put them in wrench mode. Output, input, output. Okay, so I think there should be one 
place for power. So let's get a flux point. There we go. Can put this guy in here. He is charging up with 400 million flux energy. Uh, let's go ahead and bypass your limit and just charge him. We need to input polonium in here. We've got this barrel of polonium over there. And then we need to output something. So I want to have this cable be running up somewhere. And I want to go be above my head. So let's put this actually a little bit farther up. Let's go one up. And let's get some of these ultimate pressurized tubes. There we go. We're just going to kind of go right over here. And we'll go right on top of these machines to the polonium guy. And we will do this. So, looks like this doesn't hurt your ability to generate polonium. So, now this is not on output mode. But if it was, that still wouldn't work. Okay. I'll have to figure that out in a bit. Okay. So you are an input. You must all be going in here, which is not what I want. So let's change you. To a pull. And you are now empty. There we go. Okay. We are now generating antimatter. So we turn the polonium into antimatter. And I believe we can do this faster if we had more of those um, supercharged coils. All right. There we go. That's pretty cool. Um, yeah. So the barrel should be empty now. So I should be able to take him away. I'm a little bit uh, concerned about that. So let's turn him off. I want, yeah, all the polonium is gone. Now I want to make sure all the polonium is gone before I do anything with this barrel. Okay. There we go. So there we go. We now have this one cable. I might put him out the back instead of the uh, side here. I think that would look a little bit better. So let's change that real quick. So you can see the tooltip. He's empty. So there's no harm in breaking these cables. There we go. We will go up. And we will go like that. I prefer nice straight lines. Okay, so your side config for gases, uh, you input from the bottom and you output to the back. And you are on auto eject. Okay, so you should now be turning your polonium into antimatter. Perfect. Now it is a 1000 to 1 ratio of this stuff. So uh, it's going to take quite a while to get all of the antimatter we need. Um, because we need, I think, six buckets of antimatter. So we need, uh, what is that? Is that 6 million polonium? 600,000 polonium? Oh, it, it's a lot. That's why it's a lot. So we just need to keep running this. And first of all, we're going to have to make sure that our waste barrels are OK. I'm thinking if we run this constantly, we're going to need like way more of these. So I'm probably just going to spam these under the uh, table. And we'll probably uh, turn these into ultimate pressurized tubes. 
And let's just make sure that he is, okay, he's not doing anything. He is, okay, actually, we're not generating any more waste, are we? Um, we are generating, oh, we're making more of these pellets. Probably more of these as well. No, we're not making any more. Okay, I, I turn this down to have one. So, I might do that as well. Or maybe we could do a stack. I don't know how many of these I want in the system. I'm not sure I need any more of these ever again. Doesn't mean I don't want to use them, just that I don't know what to do with them. But once both of these guys are done running, we won't have any more nuclear waste to dispose of. We only have polonium to turn into antimatter. And I think that is everything that we need. So the only thing to do is A, make sure we have enough power because I don't know the answer to that question. This guy, is he outputting 52 million RF per tick? Okay, if that's true, we are killing our power. Holy crap. Wow. That's that's impressive. Hang on. Hang on. Please stop bypassing the limit. Okay. All right. So, yeah. This guy's power hungry. We would need way more energy gen to do that. We can up his energy power. Just not that much okay he is not going down right now. he's going up right now. Is, is this guy running this guy is running okay so even our steam turbine could not keep up with that which is fine it makes sense um, he is producing not quite a million RF per tick so that's how much we could use in this guy but we can't so the answer is to kick up this guy, kick up the other guy. But it's not a big problem to do this. So I, I, I set him down so he would be stable on fuel. Is he still stable on fuel? It's a little hard to tell because of the way he balances, but I believe he is stable on fuel. I mean, I see him going from two, three, and four. So obviously, if we set him to our max water rate, um, he is going to chew through the fuel. So that's a problem to be solved. But if we do that, our fission generator can now do, what is this? Um, 1.5 million RF per tick. 1.53 million. That's really impressive. So we are now going up in power while maintaining this guy. So you can see his output is just fine. Um, but uh, we only have what we have. So, 81 millibuckets of antimatter. This will take some time unless we get more power or more production. So, our biggest problem is going to be the fuel. We are simply not producing enough fuel. You can see this guy is empty. That's because we don't have enough um, sulfur dioxide. Our entire production is limited by this guy. We are just barely breaking even on our production of sulfur and processing it into sulfur dioxide. We are not generating enough to get go any faster than we are right now. Speed upgrades will not help this situation. So our only solution to this problem is to increase the production of sulfur and sulfur dioxide, which is not too hard to do. We're going to have to expand the access system over here so we can run um, that this way, but this is not actually a difficult thing to do. So, uh, and we recently we could just, you know, go ahead. It's fine. And uh, it is fine, basically. Uh, we will get actually more nuclear waste when these are done running. So we could stop these as well. So how many pellets do we have? We have 11 of these and almost a stack of the plutonium. What is plutonium used for? You know, just for this stuff, it looks like there are reprocessed fissile fragments, which in a chemical oxidizer, we can turn to fissile fuel. I mean, 
Is that good? I'd have to do the math and find out, but it might be good. So, we would just need hydrogen chloride to do that. Mm, I'm just not sure about that. I'll have to think about it. We would need salt, too. So, oh, salt or hydrogen chloride. Then we need both. No, we only need one. Okay. All right, well, I'll have to think about that. The use for the polonium pellets, um, more coils, a couple of mechanism armor things, SPS. That looks like mostly just the mech suit stuff. And um, whatever these exporters are in the dashboard. That's probably for an inventory system I don't want. Um, yeah, I don't think I need any of this stuff. So we may be wasting our time making these polonium pellets. I don't think I need any of them anymore. So I'm probably just wasting my production of this stuff. But, um, you know, it's not a big deal. We have to wait for this stuff anyway. So it will back up. Uh, it does nothing at night, obviously, but it will back up. So, all right. I think we are well past wrapping up point for this episode. So I'm going to leave everything there. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, go ahead and hit the like and subscribe button. If you didn't, well, could you anyway? I mean, is it hurting you? I don't think it is. So, yeah. You should do that. I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.